So it's time to have a look at tying one of the most iconic dry flies that is in the armory uh, of the fly tire, and that is an artificial imitation of a mayfly. Now the one I'm gonna tie for you today, and there are loads and loads of different versions of this, is probably one of the most technically difficult you can have a go at. So with so many different patterns out there, you might be asking yourself, why on earth would you tie something complicated when there are lots of different options? The fly I'm gonna to tie today has got a detached body, which is made out of deer hair, and it's also got a wally wing, which is made out of a mallard feather, which is a, um, a quite a tricky little operation to, to kind of complete. So why on earth would I engage in that when there are lots of easier versions to, to go at? Well, put simply, I think, personally, tying a mayfly, it's worth it. The, the nature of these things, the kind of the iconic nature, I suppose, of of the hatch of these incredible little insects, their life cycle, the kind of iconic story that goes alongside them. For me as a fly tire, I think they deserve to be revered. And I think if I want to tie a mayfly pattern, I'm going to go to some trouble to do it. So bear with me while I go through a couple of things as we, we sort of go. This is one of those patterns that, you know, it can actually go quite badly pear shaped. Um, there's a couple of areas where it can go wrong. Those two specifics that I mentioned straight away. First of all, the detached body um, can be a little bit problematic. And secondly, you can have issues with making that wally wing. But just if you are going to have a go at this, just take your time, try to keep your patience. And, you know, don't get too, I suppose, upset with yourself if things don't go right first time. So just take your time, as I say, and things will go. Um, eventually, you'll get the hang of it. First things first... I'm going to make the detached body and you can probably see in the vise I've got not a hook at all but a darning needle um, a fairly sort of bog standard um, family size darning needle the sort of thing that you would use for mending holes in your socks um, and that's going to be used to make the detached body so I'm going to crack into that first of all first things first common or garden lip salve now this is very useful for this process because what it does is it helps the detached body to slide off of the needle once you've completed this part of the tie. You can use other things, you can use sticky wax for it or, you know, um, as long as it's something that doesn't kind of make everything adhere to it, it's fine. Tying thread, I'm just using a 12050D um, Semperfly Nano Silk, which is in white. And I'm just gonna catch on to my darning needle. And when I whip up the, the needle, I'm not trying to pull too hard here. So what you don't want is to this for this to kind of stick down to the, the dead body of the needle so much that you can't get it off at the end because eventually when you've tied it on the needle you're going to slide it off and then use it to to make the fly with it's a bit of kind of guesswork to work out how far up the needle you go but kind of halfway is good come back down again again i'm not pulling as hard as i might normally pull uh, with this silk to to make sure i don't stick it too too much to the needle. I'm going to use uh, pheasant tail fibre to create the very distinctive tail on the mayfly and I'm just going to strip away three of those little feather fibres like so and then I'm going to lay them on top of the needle and just catch them in like so and then just make sure everything's sitting on top you'll see that I've left the tail end of those pheasant tail fibers lying along the length of the needle and that again helps when you come to remove the detached body at the end okay now the tricky bit this is quite fiddly but I'm going to create a body out of deer hair so this is just coastal deer hair. You can see it's quite dark in colour. Of course, you can use other things to create the body. For example, you can use something like elk, which is a creamy colour. Um, you'll notice if you're out on the river, sometimes those mayfly are actually different colours. So you can tailor them, tailor them according to the, um, the kind of the natural insects that you're seeing on the river local to you. In this case, I'm using quite a dark fibre, um, partly because for me, I think this fly is all about profile. And this actually behaves a little bit more nicely than the elk, so it uh, makes my job a little bit easier when I'm creating the fly. I'm just going to take a decent pinch from the bottom of my 
deer hair patch, kind of that much, I suppose. Trim it off right down at the bottom, get as much of the length as you can. And then I'm just going to use my hair stacker, pop those in, and give it a tap to line up the tips, like so. Pop those out. Now this is probably one of the fiddliest bits of the fly, I think. So what you're going to do is you're going to spin this deer hair around the circumference of the needle. To do that, I lay the whole patch on top, the whole um, bunch on top, swap fingers and just catch in with a couple of turns. On my third turn, I'm going to bring the thread back towards me and pull. And then with my other hand, just twist to roll those deer hair fibres all the way around the needle like so. I'm just going to check to make sure it's gone all the way around, which it has. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I can catch in the end of that deer here, so that just this little bit here, and carry on attaching that to the, the needle, like so. Okay, park my thread back at the top again, and this is where it's quite fiddly, because what I've got to do is fold all of those deer hair fibres that way, while not taking up the tail. Now, if your tail is long enough, you can actually get your hackle pliers in and grab hold of it like so. So when you go to fold, you don't pick up the pheasant tail fibers when you're folding the deer hair forward, but it is fiddly and it's a bit messy. Just be careful also with the open end of the needle, not to stab yourself when you're folding this stuff forward. Okay, a bit of nimble operation here. When you've got to a stage where you feel you've sort of put a crease in all of that deer hair, let go of the hackle pliers, pinch, and just kind of push it forward. And you've got to get it round the thread as well. As I say, this is fiddly. And this will be one of those things that you have to persevere with a bit. But eventually, you should get it to this sort of stage here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, using a thread wrap, just secure that fibre so it sits like that. Okay, just make sure it sits on top. This is a good little operation to check whether it's going to slide off okay. But just chuck in a couple of other turns so you've got, got a nice little neat and tidy tail end like so. Now what I'm going to do is build up using thread wraps to the top of it and before I do that I'm just going to take my thread up, cut it underneath the fibres here and just pull it back so it's in the right position and then one, two, three, four turns, repeat the operation again and you can kind of see the way this is going to go I'm sure. Just try and Make it as neat as you can. One, two, three, four. Same again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. I'm looking for seven, which is what the natural insect has. Two more to go, so that's one, two, Four, and then the final one, the final wrap. One, two, three, four. So that's my detached tail kind of created. Two things I now need to do. I need to do a half hitch to just sort of secure it here. So to do that, just push my fingers into the back of the thread, take the bobbin over the top, take a turn round and then back through and then pass the bobbin in the loop that you've created. And just to make sure that the half hitch doesn't slip, I'm going to use my whip finish tool to hold onto the bottom of the loop and just pull it tight like so. And then shorten my thread down and just use my regular whip finisher to finish it off. One, whoops, you have to kind of steer it past the end of the needle, which is a bit fiddly. And I'm just going to do one more. 
just to finish off. Oops, steer it round, there we go. Again. So that's my detached tail created. The next bit, which is one of the most frustrating, frustrating parts of the operation, especially when it goes wrong, is to get it off the needle and into a position where I can tie it to a hook. So to do that, Hopefully that lip salve will do its job and it should be nice and slippery. So you can probably see I can turn that, just kind of spin it on its own axis. Just basically try and slide it, that one's coming off nicely. There you go, perfect. So what we end up with is that, that little tail with the pheasant tail fibre coming out of the end. Perfect. I'm going to pop the needle out of the vise and I'm going to pop in a size 12 dry fly hook. This is barbless, standard dry fly hook. You can use clink hammer hooks or all sorts of things for this but to be honest you don't need to. And then I'm just going to catch my thread on and set myself going with my tie. Next part of the tricky operation involves creating the wally wing. So I'm going to do that before I put my detached body on. Park my thread there. I've covered up a little part of the centre of the hook like so. Um, just kind of going back to just below where the point of the hook is. And I'm going to take a mallard flank feather like so to create the wally wing. First things first, I'm going to strip off all the fluffy bits. So you're left with something a bit like that. And then take a decent pinch and sweep them all back towards the end of the stalk. You're looking for an even split here, so you should have the same both sides, like so. So it just takes a couple of seconds to kind of make sure that's nice and even. Making sure it's okay. And just make sure that little V at the top is even too. So you usually end up with a couple of fibres either way. Again, a bit fiddly. There. That's it. Like so. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure that against the the hook and go a little bit bigger. This is a mayfly which is quite a big creature so to get this right what you need to do you see you've got the stalk end here basically you're going to grab hold of this sort of delta wing shape here sweeping it all back and pinching it with your other two things on your other hand like that so it creates a sort of oval shape and then I lay that on top of the hook and catch in right at the very base of where that wing is going to be created. I'm leaving, by the way, a little bit of room at the front to be able to create a head. But I've always found it's useful to get the wing in first and then put the body in afterwards. Because I'm using the, the Nano Silk style tying thread, you can actually pull reasonably hard with this. Um, and actually the other advantage to it, which I didn't mention when we used the detached body, is that it's quite slippery too, so it does come off the, um, the needle easier. Okay, a horizontal cut, and I'm happy. So that can sit there quite happily while I do the rest of the dressing on the fly. For that, I need my detached body, which is here. So I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit, because there's a few little fibres that are poking out in directions I don't need them. Just giving it a little bit of a haircut. You can put a dab of glue on this um, just to hold it in place. I'm not going to bother today because it's come out of, off the needle quite nicely. But you've got enough there to catch in. So again, lay that sort of just where the, the bend of the hook starts to pitch away. And then just use my tying thread to catch all of those fibres in. You can trim them away if you want to. I quite like having them in there because it does tend to stop the the deer hair detached body spinning around and then just you know use thread wraps there to just secure everything down I'm going to trim it in a second but just make sure everything's nice and secure 
so you've got your wing and your tail ready to go. Okay, just give that a little bit of a trim at the bottom so it's neat and tidy. Now one of the challenges you face when you're tying artificial imitations, of course, is to persuade fish to take your imitation above all the naturals. I've got straight fibre there, just going to trim it away, that are coming down. I accidentally just nicked my feather as I was cutting those deer hair bits away, but I've managed to fix it. So yeah, um, why would a fish take your imitation? ahead of a lovely, natural, juicy mayfly coming down the River Test or the Itchin or the Chalk Stream or whatever river you're fishing on. Well, I've always been a believer in trigger points and I think one of the most useful trigger points we have as anglers is to use something with a little bit of UV in it, a little bit of flash maybe. And this stuff is cracking. This is a, a blended uh, dubbing from America. There are lots of these available, extra spiky, which is great for building a body, but the key is also that it's got little tiny bits of UV flash in it. And you can probably see that just catching in the light there. And I'm just gonna make a little dubbing rope here. So just dub that on, nothing complicated. Just roll your fingers around it to create a, a body. Just keep that spare in case I need a bit more. Slide it up and just roll it around so you've got that nice body there. Now I'm going to create the, the head now. This is going really well. I'm really pleased that this is working out. I'm going to create the head and I'm using a natural fur for that one. I like squirrel. You can use fox squirrel as well, but this is just a natural squirrel. Really spiky, fantastic for dry flies. I'm just going to, again, put a little pinch of that on. Sometimes find it's useful just to wet your tips of your fingers to dub this onto your tying thread. It just makes it adhere a little bit better. You can use wax, of course. Um, but I just find that um, just a little bit of dampness on the end of your fingers rolls it around the thread. Fold the wing back a bit and just roll that around so you get sort of feelers and leggy bits and stuff like that. Okay. Ready to do a whip finish now, and normally that's the end of the fly, but in this case it isn't. So my whip finish goes in. And I'm going to trim off. Now this is the bit where you find out whether your whole tie has been ruined by a piece of clumsiness on the way, because to create the wally wing you have to tear this feather. And it's the bit that always makes me nervous. So what you do is take the top part and you're going to peel away two of the fronds like so and then just pull them down the stalk all the way to the end to create the right hand wing. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. So two bits of feather pull it down and you're left with a little portion in the middle which you very very carefully trim off like so and you also trim away these little bits at the top like so there wow Whew. last part of the process that's gone really really well I'm just going to use a little brush here to just give the dubbing a brush to make it nice and leggy. Causing a nice bit of disturbance on the surface. And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have it. The detached body mayfly with a duck wally wing, mallard duck wally wing, which to me is just the perfect imitation for fishing for those fantastic trout to, that want to rise on, on Mayfly at this certain time of year. As I say, not the easiest fly to tie, but good fun if you get it right and very satisfying when you tie it on, chuck it into the river and you see a fish rise and it ends up in your landing net. 
hope you enjoyed the tie. I um, hope you have some success having a little go at tying it. Um, as I say, keep your patience and everything will be fine. Very good luck.